Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome to Christ Church. Today is a very special day in the life of our church. Today is Children's Sabbath, and we will be celebrating the children in our lives and the plight of children around the world today as we worship. Our Director of Children and Youth, Ashley Wood, will be giving the message today, as you see there in the bulletin. But to get our service started, we're going to sing a couple songs. Um, my name is David Donathan. I'm the Minister of Music here at Christ Church. In my biblical costume, I told somebody I never get to dress as a biblical character because I'm always leading the productions that have everybody in biblical characters. So I thought today I'm going to dress as one of those biblical characters. So thank you for joining us for worship this morning. You'll see some other folks up here, the cat in the hat. Harry Potter, some other things uh, as we go through this special children's uh, Sabbath service today. Let's stand, and we're going to sing number 2088. That is in the faith we sing. This is Lord, I lift your name on high. So let's stand and sing together. Two, three. sing together. Ready? Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth. song is going to be new to everybody. So I'd like to invite you to open up uh, the green covered songbook, Worship in Song, that's there next to your seat. This is a piece entitled All My Days. This is written by Mark Miller, uh, who's very popular uh, with youth across the country and the youth that are here at this church that sing uh, love his stuff. 
Uh, he teaches up at Drew University. And uh, this particular song is all about the words that we say. And it has kind of a rock beat to it. So um, let's play through it once for them so they can hear how this will go. And then we'll sing it. Okay? We'll play through it once so you can hear. Got it? <laughs> Let's try it. Here we go. One, two, beginning, and... Let's try it. Ready? You know my words before they're said. You know my needs and I am fed. You give me life. You know my ways, my strength. together for a moment of prayer. Gracious God, we gather this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you for everything that you have provided for us in the past week, and we look forward to what you will bring to us in the days and weeks ahead. Today is a special day as we celebrate the children in our midst, so help us to always look for ways to lead those children to your light and your love. Help us to feel your presence now in this very space. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you would, turn to those around you and welcome them to worship this morning.
All right, good morning again. I'm Pastor Jay. I'm just also the cat in the hat today, and I hope you have a glorious day on this Sunday in which we gather. I need to get a good rhyme before 11 o'clock. I'll work on it, uh, you know, but uh, it's good to have you here. Uh, I wanted to share just a few uh, announcements with you as we uh, come together. Uh, one of the things is this evening, we do invite you to come back, and we invite you to put your costumes back on. Those of you, I see some of you are dressed up out here. I love it, because uh, we're having our trunk or treat at 5 o'clock. Uh, again, it's a little cool out there. We'll make some judgments, but our plan is to be in the parking lot. Uh, 6 o'clock, I'm sorry, wrong time. I'm going to be here early, I guess. But anyway, 6 o'clock in the parking lot. Uh, but again, if weather's real bad, we'll move inside into the narthex. So come anyway. We will be prepared to provide a space for you to do the trunk or treat uh, with our young ones today. Uh, also, you'll notice a couple of other things. We recently had our twice blessed sale and book drive. It was very successful. They raised a good bit of money for mission uh, with both of those sales here last weekend. Uh, uh, this weekend is also Undie Sunday. I hope some of you remember to come and drop your drawers here today. Uh, bring the underwear in that we will gather for our mission projects. So we you to do that. All Saints Sunday is just around the corner, so watch for that. Uh, also watch for a uh, special Sunday next week. Uh, again, we are moving into, of course, our pledge time, and we'll be working with that as far as our generosity Sunday. But in addition, we'll be going to a new ministry that's starting uh, that will be dealing with families in... Uh, uh, Nick use and folks like that. So be sure to come out for that. We're going to have a special prayer for those and bless some things. We're kind of starting a new ministry, which I'm very, very excited about. you also see information about our other activities that are going on. One of those for our young ones uh, is basketball sign-ups going on to get ready for our uh, children and youth basketball league here in the Charleston area. So again, just some of the announcements to be aware of. Lots of things starting to get going here uh, at our church again, and that's always because of your generosity in making that happen. As we prepare for our time of prayer, I did not have a chance to grab the prayer sheet uh, back there. Is that it? Cool. Uh, the prayer sheet, for those of you that wrote things on as you came in, it's on the altar as we always do. I wanted to share a couple of prayer concerns that come to us from our uh, assistance ministry. We've been collecting those. Uh, when I came back, I was out of town last week, and when I got back on Friday, uh, one thing they noted was there's a very high demand this week. A lot of folks coming for assistance. So makes me recognize that there are many things going on within uh, the folks in our community that are kind of marginal uh, on their lives and trying to make ends meet. There was a real high demand. They had to turn people away fairly early in the day, uh, and so please remember that. But one of those individuals who came uh, asked for prayers for their family that they could get through this rough time. Uh, they are dealing with hardship, uh, and her mother had some surgery. Another one asked for a blessing on their daughter. Uh, and then another asked for prayers for their family, their church, and their friends. Uh, one indicated they're, they're, rec they're trying to go to church, uh, trying to get to church every Sunday, but it's been very hard on them uh, in this time of struggle. Uh, and so, again, we want to remember them. And remember all of our friends uh, out in our community who, you know, these times of years, as it gets cooler, it gets tougher for them. Uh, there are many on the streets. I know as I drive around town, you see them as well. Uh, let us remember them and uh, try to support them to you know, go to the shelters and a place where they can receive the, the assistance they need. Well, as we prepare now for our time of prayer, I'll, I'll light a candle. Uh, again, are there any prayer concerns out there? I kind of jumped the gun. Yes, Caroline. Uh-huh. Rabbi Yurecki, we want to remember him and all of our, our Jewish sisters and brothers here in town. It's a very difficult time. Excuse, excuse me. Yes, and, and Bishop Grove, our beloved bishop here, uh, retired here as our bishop emeritus for a number of years. Uh, he's in Tennessee uh, and is going through some health issues and is in the hospital. So we want to remember uh, Bishop Grove and, of course, Mary Lou uh, as they move through that time together. Uh, so as we, any others? Okay. And, of course, we remember the whole situation uh, that's going on in the Middle East. And particularly, I think, on this day uh, when we celebrate children, its impact on the little ones. I'm always amazed at how many young children there are in that little piece of land uh, that's under so much contention right now. So let us now uh, sing our prayer chorus as I light the candle and go to the Lord in prayer.
loving, gracious God, our loving parent and friend. We come today, O oh God, into your presence as your children, those through whom you've given your grace and your love. And as we gather today, we, we celebrate the lives of the children here in our church and our community, the way that your light shines through them, bringing us joy and, and hope and laughter and all those things. As we gather, though, we recognize that for many children in our world, today is perhaps not a happy day. For so many of the children around this world are, are hungry. And so we pray that they would receive the nourishment and the food that they need. We give thanks for those mission organizations and projects that are in those places seeking to feed and nourish the little ones. Today, our hearts are heavy for the Little ones caught in the crossfire of the violence across our world, particularly those in the Gaza Strip and in Israel, where the violence rages. The images of the little ones being harmed, Lord, breaks our heart. And so we pray, O oh God, that your spirit of peace might come to that region, might come to all those who are seeking revenge, that they might realize that it is only through the hope of the little ones that your truth and life might be made known. So, Lord, protect them, surround them with your grace, bring healing, and most especially, bring peace. We also pray for our sisters and brothers here at home that are fearful because of the things raging in that place, our Jewish sisters and brothers here in Charleston, our Muslim friends as they wrestle as well with the issues around them. We offer special prayers for those in our community who, who are ill, those in hospitals, those facing surgeries, those that have now been moved into special care. Pray special prayer for our beloved bishop as he recoups in the hospital and receives treatment. We also, Lord, just pray today for peace, praying for that peace that would come so that all children might laugh and have joy might run free in the grass and play and never worry about things like hunger or bombs or bullets. So God, on this day in which we celebrate children, we offer special prayers praying for your peace and praying that we might be folks who articulate that peace and bring that hope right here into our community. And we ask it today, as always, in the one who came to bring peace, the one who invited all the children to come to him, this Jesus, our Lord, who asks us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine's the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello there. Hello. You see what I have here? Yeah, toothpaste. The toothpaste, yeah, I got a tube of toothpaste. You wanna know what I'm gonna do with this toothpaste? Sure. Hold this. Oh, okay. I made a mess in there. Yeah. Here. Try and put it back in there. It's doing well. Yeah, that ain't working. 
You're struggling, man. The two with toothpaste is just like our words. Once we say it, we can't take it back. And so you got to be careful with what you say to people because then it could be harmful. Like toothpaste, a little bit is okay, but too much is bad. I got the toothpaste on my dinosaur costume. <laughs> Now, for everyone, please bow your heads. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here today, and thank you for the lessons that we are about ready to hear. In your name we pray. Amen. This morning, we're going to do a presentation of Bibles. Um, I don't believe that we have any of the children receiving Bibles here at this service, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit. It's been a tradition of the church for the three-year-olds to receive um, a rhyme Bible and for the third graders to receive a elementary age Bible. And I, I don't know how long this tradition has been going on at the church, but uh, we're, we're going to honor that today and, and honor those children later in the service. But since they're not here with us, I'd like to read their names. We have one three-year-old in our congregation right now, and that's James Rose. And we have several third graders. We have Julia Frankenberry, Lucille Silkwood, Emerilla Silberneckel, Solomon Kent, Emilia Rose, Kristen Strickland, Katie McQuarrie, and Brianna Malone. And if you know any of those children, um, I have the Bibles here. You can take one home to them, or we'll try to get them to them when we do see them. Also, if you notice up front, you'll see that we have the college care packages. We're going to be doing a blessing on those also at the 11 o'clock service today. But I wanted to share that with you guys as well. The youth group spent last Sunday packing these care packages full of goodies and toys and gifts and words of encouragement for our college age students. And if you didn't get to um, donate to this earlier, it costs seventeen fifty per box to mail these out to the students. So if you'd like to participate in that, um, you could put in the offering and mark it for college care packages. And with that, we'll have the offering. I just want to share briefly before the offering, as we often do, uh, to let you all know that it's because of your generosity we are able to do things like give Bibles to our children, send care packages to our young people who are far from home and waiting for that word of hope. And so I give you thanks, as always, as your pastor, for your generosity in making that happen. Because uh, one thing about your gifts here at Christ Church, they are used to touch lives. Touch the lives of those that are in our families here, those whose lives are beyond these walls. So again, thank you for your generosity. Let us now celebrate worship by sharing our tithes and our offerings. And Ashley had asked that we sing this particular song in the service today. So the words will be up on the screens.
have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Holy words of our faith handed down. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 25 through 29. So then, putting away falsehood, let each of you speak the truth with your neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Those who steal must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor, doing good work with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is good for building up, as there is need, so your words may give grace to those who hear. This is the word of God for the people of God. So, in case you can't tell, I'm a big fan of Harry Potter. The movies are good. The Broadway show, the Fantastic Beasts spinoffs, they're pretty good. But the original seven Harry Potter books are special. In many ways, they continuously talk about the fight of good versus evil. But they also contain so many metaphors that we can follow in our lives. For example, the creatures called Dementors suck out all the positive emotions from people. When a Dementor is near you, you can't see it, but you can feel its coldness. It fills you up from the inside. All of your joy is gone. You can't imagine ever being happy again. If that's not an accurate description of what depression is, then I don't know how else to describe it. Plus, after a Dementor encounter, the best antidote is chocolate, and we all know that a little chocolate can help you feel better. Harry Potter is one of the most popular figures in our culture today. Some people, a lot of preachers and other Christians, have spoken out against Harry Potter that he's evil, that it lures children towards witchcraft and the occult. So how many of you have seen Harry Potter? Are any of you practicing witchcraft at this time? So we have to remember that this is a work of fiction, but with it comes truth. It's my understanding that all the spells in the Harry Potter books have been tried by people. And unfortunately, none of them have worked. Some of those cleaning spells would have been nice to have. But we can find that the author, J.K. Rowling, sends out a very clear message with her writing. There's both good and evil forces at work. The good is obviously good. And the evil is dangerous. It's bad. It's to be avoided. It's to be conquered by the good. 
I can live with lessons like this in children's books. I hope all children can learn lessons like these. Oftentimes, God is at work in our lives before we know anything about it. Just like magic was at work in Harry's life long before he even knew that he was a wizard. I know that God had protected me on many occasions and was speaking to me even at times when I didn't realize what it was. Like our main character, Harry, we often feel unloved, unaccepted, and unwanted. Many of us go through these feelings all the time. And sometimes the guilt of our sin and our failings feed on those. But just as Professor Dumbledore cared for Harry and wanted to see him grow into his full potential as a wizard, God cares for us in the same way. He wants us to fulfill our potential as children in his kingdom. Now, if you're a true Harry Potter fan, you know the reason that Harry is invincible against evil Voldemort's power is because his mother died for him when he was very young. She loved her son so much that she threw herself in front of Voldemort's curse and took the death upon herself. From that time on, Harry could not be harmed by Voldemort. As Dumbledore explained to Harry, no evil was greater than the love his mother had for him. She loved Harry so much that she died for him, and her love protects him. It's a great story. A lot of that can ring true in our hearts because we know that someone did that for us. Jesus died for us in the same way that Harry's mother died for him. We feel it in our hearts and we yearn for it. Now, of course, Harry Potter is just a story of make-believe. But the good news is Jesus really did this for us. As you can see, there's a lot of things that I could have pulled from to talk to you today. But when I really started working on this, one topic kept coming into my mind. And that was magic words. The words have magic. Our words matter. Our words can change lives. They can change our lives and the lives of those around us. Our words even have the power to change the world. When you put together a sermon or a message, you follow a particular Bible verse. You remember I picked the verse from Ephesians talking about using our words for good. I also pulled a quote from Harry Potter to go along with it. I focused on this. Words are the most powerful and inexhaustible source of magic that we have. This is a quote by Professor Dumbledore. He says this to Harry because Dumbledore understands the importance of his words. He understands the power that his words can wield. Words are magic. Words have the power to do great things. Words can be used for both good and evil. Words can heal. Words can love. They can build a person up. But they can also tear a person down. They can hurt people. And they can destroy. Our words matter. We're saved by our words. With our words, we confess that we are sinners we accept Jesus into our heart with the words that we speak. We pray prayers of confession and repentance. We pray for blessings in our lives and the lives of those we encounter. Our words have power. There's another line from Harry Potter that I quote quite a bit, and it's, our choices define who we really are far more than our ability. The words that we choose can move mountains or it can destroy them. Our words are magic. The Bible teaches us this too. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, the Bible says, 
life and death are in the power of the tongue. The Gospel of Matthew in chapter 12, a good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and an evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. From the chapter of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And it goes on to say that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. I could go on. A quick Google search brings up dozens and dozens of scripture pointing to the power of our words. However, I think we forget how much power our words truly hold. We forget the effects that our words can have on others. Just like in Harry Potter, our words have the power of light and dark. In the book of Proverbs, it says, words give life and words bring death. We have to choose. It means you have never spoken a neutral word in your life. Words have direction. Words have movement. Words can be encouragement, hope, love, peace, unity, instruction, wisdom, and correction. But if your words are moving towards death, there'll be words of anger, malice, slander, jealousy, gossip, division, contentment, racism, violence, judgment, condemnation. Your words have direction. How many of you heard, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? I completely disagree with this statement. I'm sure many of you here can remember something hurtful that someone has said to you, maybe five years ago, maybe ten years ago, maybe something somebody said to you when you were in third grade that still bothers you today, that still stays with you. What people say can make a difference between success and failure, between good and bad. Remember, our words have power. Jesus taught his disciples about the power of words. One day, while walking down a road, Jesus cursed a fig tree. When they went back the next morning, the tree had withered from its roots. He told them, have faith in God, and if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt, but believes what he says, it will happen. It will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you have received it, and it will be yours. Your words have power. In 1866, Alfred Nobel invented dynamite. He developed its explosive power from nitroglycerin in a stick form so it would be safe and easier to use. He understood the benefits that this could bring to mankind. They began to use dynamite to build bridges and to move mountains. The power of dynamite was incredible, and it had the ability to improve convenience and progress in the lives of man. But soon, people discovered how to use it for war. That same dynamite that had been used and created to build society was being used to destroy life. Alfred Nobel was so impacted by the negative use of dynamite that before he died, he bequeathed his entire fortune for the establishment of the Nobel Peace Prize. He didn't want his legacy to be connected to destruction. He wanted to be connected to peace. As people, we have the equivalent power of dynamite in the very words that we use. Our words have the power to both build and destroy. Another story I have for you is there's two jumping frogs. 
One day they fall into a large well and they cannot get out. They try for hours and hours to jump and to stay above the water. Soon other animals come around the hole and they start saying to them, give up, there's no hope. The first frog gives up and drowns. But the second frog kept jumping and to the shock of everybody, he made it to the top of the well. The other frog said, how did you do that? The frog explained to them, I'm deaf. The only reason why I can understand you now is I'm close enough to read your lips. But when I was down in the bottom of the well and I saw all of you cheering for me, I knew I could do it. Parents, as we celebrate children today, think about the words that you speak to them. Researchers claim that it takes seven positive comments to reverse just one negative comment. Think about all the negativity a child hears in a day, from their teachers to bullies, social media. The lives of children can be flooded with negativity. We must be in a constant battle with the evil that's creeping into the lives of our children. It's our job to fill them with as much good and positivity as we possibly can. We also must teach them to use their words as a source of light and not dark. Words have power. Just what will you use your power for? Choose words of light, of kindness, of love. Use your words to build other people up. Use your words as blessings and as prayers. But most importantly, use your words to praise God and to give him glory through all things are given. Amen. There we go. As we uh, bring this service to a close, thank you, Ashley, very much for that. We're going to uh, stand and sing the gift of love. Perfect to end this service with as we talk about the words that we say. It's number 408 in the hymnal.
As we go from this place today, remember how powerful you are. Remember that you can choose what you put into the world. Make it be positive. Make it be helpful. Lord, bless us and keep us and help us spread your good word as we go. Amen.